That was weird. Okay, I'm a little dizzy. Uh, today, we're going to talk about 3D navigation in the Revit software, using various tools to fly through the environment, walk around the environment, look at it in different ways in all aspects of the three-dimensional model, and get right down to exactly the location where you want to see and what's most important to you in your projects, giving you a better understanding before construction even takes place. Let's check it out. In this three-dimensional view, we'll look at navigating through the three-dimensional environment using various tools. In the upper right-hand corner is called the view cube. Clicking on this cube in different orientations, different corners, will rotate the image in any direction and orientation you wish. You can even look at the underside of the building if there are structural plumbing areas there, you can review those. You can see a direct straight on view, clicking any of the six sides of this cube, top, bottom, front, back, left and right. You can also click on this home icon, which will typically take you to a top front right orientation. In this view are also the navigation bar, where you can click on this drop down list where you have full navigation wheel and a few others clicking on full navigation wheel will bring up a navigation widget that will follow your cursor around where you can zoom in by hovering over each text symbol, pan around, orbit freely. Rewind will take you back to a previous orientation. This is very useful because in a three-dimensional environment it's very easy to get disoriented within your view and get lost or to a orientation that you're not happy with and it's hard to get back from. Next we'll switch to creating a camera view which is a panoramic orientation. I'm going to first go to a top-down floor plan view. This makes it much easier to create the three-dimensional camera view. Going back view tab, create panel, 3D view drop down list, and choose camera. This turns your cursor into a camera icon. Wherever you left click and place that first will become the placement position of that camera. I'm going to click on the outside lower left hand corner of the building and as you move your cursor you can see where it's creating three horizontal lines or three lines of length. These are the focal length in the middle and focal extent on the left and right hand side. Left click through the building to the other side wherever you want to place that at an angle and direction and that creates a new panoramic 3D view. You can see it's facing in the orientation and the direction where that camera was placed. Clicking on the outside boundary using the crop box here you can stretch that in all directions. Widening that to more of a panoramic view condition. You can also change the view display style to wireframe which is disorienting. Hidden line which is all black and white grayscale. Shaded mode giving the material coloring which also has the shaded tone where the light source would be located. Consistent color gives everything the same color tone and feel. A new feature in Revit is called Textures, which uses a form of the material rendering version. And then finally, Realistic, which is the full rendered version of the materials being used. This is a simplistic rendering. It will look even better than this when you run a full complete rendering of the design model. From this view, you can go back to the navigation wheel and use these tools to even greater degree. So you can use the zoom tool to zoom in and out of this space, pan around the view, orbit freely. Again, if you get into a situation where it's disorienting and you don't know how to get back to it, always use the rewind option to go back to a previous orientation. You also have the option to look up and down from within this camera angle view. And my favorite part is the walk option. So you can actually move as if you're walking through the environment. The further away you get from that bottom dot, the faster you're walking. You can walk through environments. There's no stopping or clipping in this condition. Once you're inside, you can actually look up and down, seeing inside of this residential building. Again, you can see all of the materials being rendered there. Forward through this foyer area. Look around further. Kitchen area inside walk towards the fireplace, turn around and look up, and you can see there's actually a balcony going to the second floor area above. Using the navigation wheel, you can also use the up and down option to go up and down. You can go down through the floor, up through the ceiling, and now that I'm on the second floor, I can actually walk forward, navigating around further. This is a great feature to use for clients to give them a free orientation of how looking in their building before construction can take place. This will answer a lot of questions, give them a better understanding of their design features, and hopefully give them a wow factor that will help them spec you as a consultant. Any one of these view orientations can be saved, so if you're interested in this three-dimensional view of the closet door, the view I'm currently looking at is under Views, 3D View, currently just called 3D View 1. I can right click on that view, 
duplicate the view and rename it to whatever I want. 3D closet door. Creating as many of these views as you want to. These can be placed on sheets, printed out for presentations. Definitely want to use those throughout the environment. Next, we'll look at the ability to create a three-dimensional walkthrough, which is a little more advanced feature using a similar function to the camera. Going back to the View tab, Create Panel. Going back to the View tab, Create Panel, 3D View drop-down list, and choose Walkthrough. It looks like a pair of feet. It says Create an animated 3D walkthrough of the model. You can export a walkthrough into an AVI file format or image files and export the walkthrough for later purposes. Click this option and it gives you the ability to select locations where you want the walkthrough to exist. You're actually placing camera positions with this orientation. So I'm just left clicking over and over again as I walk through this floor plan area. And when you're done with that, make sure you click the finish walkthrough option and then that creates the walkthrough position. Looking in the project browser, this will also take you to a different area that has been added called walkthroughs, which is a new category. Click into walkthrough one, which will take you to the view of the camera that you just created for this walkthrough. Again, using the crop boundary, you can stretch that out, change the graphics quality of the view Once you have created the walkthrough and gone back to the walkthrough view, again under the view tab, walkthroughs category, walkthrough number one is what this is called right now. Click into the view, it will show the last frame of the walkthrough that was just created. To access the walkthrough is a little confusing and difficult. Select the outside crop boundary of the walkthrough boundary of that view, go to the Modify Characters tab and choose Edit Walkthrough. This will actually open the walkthrough tools and allow you to edit and modify the walkthrough characteristics further. Now by default it will end with the last frame currently selected. Currently you see where it's 300 of 300 frames and there's no easy way to get the navigation tools of the walkthrough playback to show up. Instead, what you have to do is select the frame text area and then type in number one and hit enter. This will take you back to frame number one of the entire walkthrough. And in this case, it also exited the walkthrough edit. So you have to click the frame of the crop boundary again and choose edit walkthrough if that is what happened. Then you can see where it says frame one of 300. So that is how many frames are currently existing within that walkthrough. Then you have a walkthrough bar that shows previous keyframe, previous frame, next frame, next keyframe, and play. When you hit play for the first time, it has to generate all of those frames individually. So where it says 300, that means once you hit play, it will have to go through and render all of those 300 frames for the first time, which can take a little bit of time. So you will have to wait for that to occur before you can see the entire walkthrough take place. I have already done this initially, so it's running a little bit faster right now, but you can see it's still slow. What it's actually doing is running through each frame one at a time, rendering that image out separately, and then you can stitch it all together as a video that you can export. Again, because of the intensity of this command, it is not easy to navigate the environment to make it look the way you want. It can take some time to get used to, and get comfortable with the tools. When previewing the walkthrough, I highly recommend turning the view into a much less 
visual quality, such as from realistic, taking it down to hidden line. Then, when you preview the walkthrough, it does not take as long to render each frame. You can at least get an understanding of how the walkthrough is taking place. You can then navigate through the walkthrough frame by frame and actually save the orientation of the view that you're looking at by using the look tool to save that position within that keyframe. And then you can reset the frame back to the beginning again. And when you play the walkthrough video once more, it should capture all of those positions that you set the camera to. You can spend a lot of time working through this situation where you have all of the camera positions and angles set up correctly, all of the frames configured. And finally, once you have the entire walkthrough established, you can go back to the file application menu, down to the export tool, expand down and choose animations and images, choosing walkthrough. It'll ask you some information on how you want that to be established. Here is where you definitely want to choose the visual style correctly. And depending on the visual style, the length of the video, and some other characteristics will determine how long it takes to export this video because of the time intensity of the rendering of each frame and video itself. And then you can finally pre uh, then you can finally use this video for presentation purposes. Once you have the walkthrough established, opening a floor plan view and the walkthrough view only, go back to the view tab, windows panel, and choose tile views. You can tile both views side by side. Selecting the crop boundary of the walkthrough will actually turn on the camera path of the walkthrough on the floor plan. Then as you edit the walkthrough and then play the walkthrough over again, you can actually see the camera translate throughout the building structure into each position where the camera takes place. You can see it turning and rotating, making its orientation to the final frame. From here as well, you can click on the floor plan and you have grips that will let you edit all of the positions of that camera in its orientation. Selecting the crop boundary of the walkthrough, choosing edit walkthrough, clicking back to the floor plan in the options bar below the keyframe walkthrough selection area, you have control options where you have active camera, path, add keyframe, and remove keyframe. Notice that all of the node grips of the path are red currently with active camera selected. Changing them to path option will switch them all to a blue node. Only when you are in controls path with the nodes being blue do you have the ability to select each camera frame and change its orientation and position. This is the only method that allows you to modify the camera after it's been created for the walkthrough. This gives you the ability to move and shift every position individually. You can then switch to each individual keyframe. Editing each one individually. Clicking on the option to add keyframe will allow you to add a new keyframe along the path and then switch back to path edit, giving the ability to control that new keyframe orientation. 
And again, it can be very difficult to get used to the controls within these tools. Also giving the ability to remove keyframe allows you to select any of the nodes of the keyframes, removing those or adding new ones again or edit path once more. Switching between each frame by typing in the number. The controls absolutely could be a little more robust but this is what it gives you for the option. Reset camera, moves the camera target point back to its walk frame path if it has been adjusted from the original position. If that is not what you want to happen, then you'll have to reset that once more. Once all of the edits have taken place, again, it'll ask you to quit the editing of the walkthrough, click yes to keep the changes, select the walkthrough once more, go back to the first frame, and you can play the walkthrough once again with all of the edited changes. The speed of the walkthrough, at least in this condition, is not something that can easily be adjusted. Once the image or the rendering of the video has been exported, you can use third-party video editing software to slow down or speed up the camera itself. The tools within Revit are extremely limited, but that is not what the Revit software has been created for initially. It does give you the ability to create these images, renderings, and videos, but not all the tools necessary for editing them. I hope you enjoy that little excerpt from the Revit software on navigating all the three-dimensional environments of the Revit software. It is completely expansive, all-encompassing, can be confusing, but very intense as far as the rendering quality and the images that you can get out of the software, and it is impressive. Use it on your clients, and they will thank you for it. Thanks for joining us. This channel is sponsored by Imaginet Technologies. With over 20 years of experience and more than 100 industry experts, Imaginet is well equipped to assist with any needs for software, training, implementation, including Productivity Now, a video training resource for many types of industry leading software. Check out the available licensing packages at Imaginet.com. Contact Imaginet today and mention this channel to get a special offer. Check out our previous videos below. Comment below and tell us more information you'd like to see covered in the Revit software.